Welcome to the Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids, where we focus on topics that impact young people today. I'm Antony Barone Kolenk. I'm a father of five who served in the Air Force for 21 years. I'm now a law professor and a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine. I'm also the author of The Harwood Mysteries, an inspirational medieval fiction series for kids aged 10 and up. Here on The Shepherd's Pie, we want to inform, inspire, and help you raise happy, healthy, faithful kids, whether you're a youth minister, a teacher, a parent, anyone. In today's jam-packed episode, we'll be talking about how we can use snowflakes to teach kids that they are unique in God's plan. My guest is E. Marie, an author who has written a book about a snowflake who has a very special mission from God. And in the entertainment review segment of the show, Catholic Mom and Daughter will be joining me as guest reviewers to discuss two wonderful family books for Advent. Winter and Advent are here, and that means not only cold weather and joyous decorations, but also great books to buy as Christmas gifts. Growing up in New Jersey, I used to love when winter came. It always built the anticipation that Christmas would be coming soon. When we were raising our kids, some of our best memories of Advent were going through some of the kids' books, reading with the little ones about the Nativity story and winter and even Santa Claus. Today's interview segment talks about A Snowflake's Adventure, written by E. Marie, which shows kids that God has a special plan for their lives. Today I am speaking with E. Marie, the author of A Snowflake's Adventure, which is a children's picture book about God's love and exciting purpose for each child. She's been a longtime Sunday school teacher, worked with a children's pastor, and, and even served as a women's Bible study leader. She's active in writers groups and is working on several fiction projects, including a romance and a middle grade suspense trilogy. E. Marie, it is wonderful having you on the show today. Well, thank you so much, Tony. I'm happy to be here. What has drawn you to write a children's picture book? I feel like a lot of children, uh, especially nowadays, you're not sure that you were supposed to be here if you were a mistake. And also in my search for what's right, what's wrong, if God is alive, if he's really real, all of those questions came into play. And, and what age range would you say this book uh, is best for? I would say anywhere between four and ten Wonderful. And about how many pages is it? 18 pages of writing and pictures. And then uh, there's a fun fact. So you could find out information about uh, snow and then three pages that you can color. Uh, it's called The Snowflakes Adventure. It sounds like a wintry tale, but it's not a holiday tale, right? Right. It's not uh, specifically for holidays, although I'm hoping that lots of parents and grandparents buy it for their children for the holidays. It you know covers a lot of different areas between you know snow and how the snow melts and becomes uh, food for plants and all of that. So it really covers every season. Okay, and and so tell us what is the premise of the story? So Pearl is afraid to leave Heaven's Gate. She doesn't want to melt, and while all of her trillions of um, brothers and sisters snowflakes are falling, she's warning them that, hey, you guys, you're going to melt. And uh, they're not listening. They're thinking about what their future entails. And so their future is part of uh, becoming a snowball or um, water for the lake and uh, for vegetation. She's still not convinced. She's still holding on to Heaven's Gate and she's not going to fall. And so then the creator comes along and says, well, Pearl, if you don't fall to earth, you're going to miss the best adventure. And she wants to know what that is. And he tells her, you're going to melt and become water for animals and for my most precious creation, which is people. Then she's thinking about it and she thinks, well, yeah, you know, that might be a good thing. That might be a good idea. But then she sees all of the other snowflakes and she thinks, well, but you already have so many others. I'm not special. And that's when the creator tells her, yeah, I made you special and I made you for a special purpose. 
And that's, I guess, for me, the biggest thrust. I want kids to know, even though they may look like other kids, they may dress like other kids, they may live in homes like other kids or apartments, they're still special and unique. And God knows exactly who they are and has a special plan for them. You know, in picking the character of a snowflake, of course, you hear, you know, no two snowflakes are alike, uh, just as I guess no two people are alike. So I can only assume that was part of uh, what went into your selection of the snowflake. But are, are you also from up north? You love winter and skiing and things? That was exactly my thinking. No two snowflakes are alike. God did not make us from a cookie cutter mold. He made us all different and he loves that we're all different. Yeah, I was born and raised in northern New Jersey. I remember truckloads of snow every winter. It was amazing. And then um, as a teenager, my family moved to California and I thought, oh man, this is living sunshine all the time. It was just awesome. But now I live in Idaho and I just really appreciate all of the seasons. Oh my goodness, I just really, really love the seasons. Well, you might not know this about me, but I grew up in West Patterson, New Jersey. So I'm not sure if I'm too far from where your uh, stomping grounds were as a kid. Tony, I grew up in West Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> no way. We might be related to each other. Yeah. Tony, I have to tell you, oh, I have never met anyone who knew where <laughs> West Patterson is. Never mind, grew up there. <laughs> Crying out loud. <laughs> what crazy. a small world. Yeah, that is a pretty small world. <laughs> Yeah, no, both of us, I think, have lost most of our New Jersey accents. So. Yeah, I would have never yeah. guessed. How funny. Yeah, okay. that is funny. All right, so going back to, all right, so the illustrations and the cover on this book is just adorable. And oh, I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen all the illustrations inside, but I can only assume they're equally adorable. One of my favorites is uh, at the very end, because the children are making, they're making snow angels, but it's every nationality they're they're all together and i just love that and i i love that they are caring for each other and i do remember that as a child i don't think you thought in terms of color or poverty or wealth just the innocence and i i absolutely love that i don't like that we lose that you know and i think that's what's so wonderful about children's books they bring you right back to that innocence and uh the the pure joy without um the tainted parts or you have to second guess what somebody is saying or did they really mean that you know if somebody tells you you look good today as a child you accepted that and you thought oh wow or you did really well on this test you know you might have gotten a b or a c but just that encouragement made you feel so good and i i feel like you know as as adults i wish we could keep some of that and you're talking about the innocence of children. And, and when you were describing the story that you wrote, I was definitely getting that vibe. You know, I could just picture the little pearl snowflake, you know, not wanting to leave, seeing things with such, you know, innocence that really came across. And, and so before we go off of your illustrations, so who did your illustrations for the book? Uh, I can't say enough good stuff about Jack Foster. Jack is wonderful. Uh, you could tell from the illustrations, he's been at this for quite a while. And um, he has like a signature thing that he does with eyes and uh, just really makes them pop. And, which I think is so wonderful because I do think our eyes are like the window to our soul. And so he really plays that up. Uh, so he's just been a delight to work with. That's wonderful. So we've got the story with these beautiful illustrations of this innocent little snowflake trying to figure out whether she should leave heaven and go on the journey that God prepared for her. So mm -hmm. let me ask this. So that's a really interesting angle to take. Why is this message uh, resonating with you that you that you would choose that as the uh, as the centerpiece of your story? Mm. Um, one of the things I heard uh, growing up was that, you know, maybe I was a mistake that I uh, shouldn't have been born. And it, you know, kind of really hangs over your head until you grasp the fact that you were meant to be, that God did mean for you to have life. As a child growing up, it's confusing. It's um, demeaning. You know, you have no self-esteem, no self-worth. And you carry that into adulthood and, you know, kind of wonder how many adults are wondering wandering around thinking, well, I can't do this. And where does that can't or that negativity stem from? So I'm always wondering about that. You know, when you meet somebody and you hear that, at first you might be like, 
well, that's a, you know, that's a really negative attitude to have. But if you wonder where that came from, where they, you know, you get to know that person, they tell you a little bit about what their journey has been. I kind of wrote it from that perspective too, that children need to know that first of all, they were created on purpose, that they were not a mistake. And then as you go into adulthood, you can do things that, like the Bible says, we can do all things through Christ. I think we should know that, that uh, we have worth. We definitely have worth to him. And it's worth it to try to do things instead of uh, sitting there locked up or locked in your own shell thinking, I, I can't, I can't do anything. Yeah, and especially in today's disposable culture, where not only are, are we consumers and disposing of everything, but children, you know, are, are disposed of the, the unborn. And so it, it does seem like that's a great idea to reach out to them at the earliest of ages to try to get that message into their, their heads, you know, almost before the world starts giving them a different message. Uh, so how do you actually get Pearl to ultimately learn that lesson? Does she ever really understand that in the story? She does because uh, the creator comes and talks with her. And I, I think that's uh, kind of like us. We're, we're searching, searching, and, you know, she's just not, Pearl is not getting it uh, until the creator comes and talks with her. I remember this song from when I was little, but, you know, to have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And I think we finally come to the end of ourselves. Things aren't working out. We're too afraid to do anything. Uh, we see how things are going in the world and we're you know, just pent up with fear. And that was Pearl. And then the creator comes and talks and, you know, it just changes everything. And I think that about us in our everyday life, that until we actually talk with the Lord and hear what he has to say to us, our whole vision, everything changes. Yes, definitely. And and so a book like this is one way for us to really try to reach out to little kids, really, with mm -hmm. this message. What advice might you have for a parent or a teacher, especially if they have a kid who doesn't seem to fully appreciate their uniqueness and how mm -hmm. special they are? Have you learned ways in dealing with kids to really reach them, mm -hmm. uh, especially at those younger ages? I, I would say, first of all, pray. Um, it goes back to talking with their creator. And instead of seeing that that child has these problems or issues and uh, hammering on those, think of ways to connect with that child. Because we all have, you know, some people use those sayings that uh, you're a visual learner or you're an auditory learner. That may or may not be true. And that's part of reading to a child. They get to see the words they get to hear the words. But I do think, first and foremost, pray. And then second of all, interact with that child in the ways you see them excelling or accepting. Get to understand them where they are and interact with them that way. I was going to uh, go into, we adopted our youngest through foster adopt. We had foster children. We knew we wanted to adopt a child. And he has so many developmental delays. Uh, his parents were on drugs, all of that. And so we had to kind of unlock, uh, figure out the code to getting him to learn. And it was more of participating in his world versus trying to get him to participate in ours. The things that we learned, I thank God for all of them. I would have never been exposed to any of that without having uh, Luke in our lives. So it, it's been a blessing. Beautiful. You know, and, and going back to your Pearl story, too, what, what strikes me in the premise of your story here is Pearl has a purpose, but it sounds like in order to achieve the purpose, she has to change from being a snowflake to melting. In hearing you say that, yeah, that's exactly what happens, because for all of us, you know, there, there is a part or a time in our lives that we do have to change uh, going to school and making friends. Um, some of us are, you know, set in our ways. And so uh, in order to get along or do a team sport or whatever, we might have to bend a little bit. And I think with Pearl, that was definitely a fear of hers. And uh, to be honest, I think we all have those pockets of fear. And until we agree to melt and bend a little bit, we're going to stay in our own little box and never understand the bigger picture or get to have that adventure because we won't, won't yield at all. That was one of her, her main concerns was, if I leave here, I won't be a snowflake for long. I'm going to turn into something else. Now, what does she wind up becoming? Do we find out in the story? 
Well, she becomes part of this lake and that feeds into flower beds and uh, vegetation and um, then ultimately becomes water for human consumption. So that's Pearl's journey. What are kids saying after they read Pearl's story? Do you have any feedback from them? Yeah, actually, it, it is kind of fun. At first, uh, my granddaughter was having a little bit of trouble with the word snowflake. <laughs> Afterwards, when we talked about it, I said, well, what what did you learn from that? And she said, well, God loves me. And I said, yeah, and do you realize that you have a special uh, adventure that God has for you? And she said, yeah. So I think she definitely got the point. And, you know, I think if we look at our lives as adventures, and they are definitely God-ordained, all of the blessings that have been put into our lives, you know, those are adventures that God already saw happening for us, and uh, he worked it all out. So, yeah, so it makes life interesting. Yes. But, you know, and, and I want to go back to uh, something you had said earlier about kids, uh, and it sounds like you may have had some experience with kids saying this even in your childhood, that they didn't feel like they had purpose. And I don't know if it's even, you know, these kids nowadays, they have the whole world opening up to them. But as far as even when you were growing up, it sounded like there might have been a story there. I always had an aunt who would come alongside and say, oh, you can do this try this or do that, always encouraging. And I think uh, rather than focusing on the negative, having that one person who would come along and give you some encouragement, just it, it changed my world. It changed everything. I see kids today and I think they're so mesmerized by things that they can have, uh, things that their parents give them rather than things that they work for. They're so focused on having their hair exactly the same way, listening to exactly the same music, going just in that one avenue rather than saying, you know, I am unique. I am different. I do like different music. I do like to read. Uh, I, I don't like to whatever that negative thing is. Um, being encouraging and saying, I don't think that's right. I see the good in that person and uh, befriending somebody who is different. Yeah. And thinking again about your, your snowflake, I mean, it sounds like your snowflake actually had a preview of what her life was going to be. Uh, does your snowflake find fulfillment uh, in her story as, as her life unfolds and she melts and she feeds these different areas? Uh, do we have a sense of, of how she views her life as it's unfolding? As she lets go of the gate to accept that, she, yeah, she does have a purpose and there is an adventure. She is excited to fall to earth. And it's really kind of cool that as she's fluttering down to earth, she passes by children. And as she's passing by them to go onto the lake, she says to herself, surely God must have a plan for them too, an adventure for them. And uh, so it's kind of like she gets that full circle. She gets the concept of, first of all, who she is, that she has worth and that God has created everything to have worth. And these children that she passes by are so precious and uh, she sees that they have worth as well. These books sound beautiful uh, and wonderful. Where can our listeners find them? Well, right now they're on Amazon and uh, Goodreads, Barnes and Noble, and uh, also Target. But I'm so excited because this is my first book and uh, I just love the, the premise of it. And I just hope that everybody loves it and runs out and buys one too. <laughs> do, do you the plan other, on writing sequels? I am thinking about that, but I'm also thinking, you know, a snowflake isn't the only thing that has to become something else. You know, I, I think about all the other things that are out there in creation and how things do have to change and are purposeful and useful to the Lord and to all of us. So, um, yeah, I have I have some ideas. I have some plans for that. All right. And if, if a listener wants to find this, what about a website or other place they can go? Yeah, you can definitely come to my my website, uh, Inc. Uh, M-E-R-R-Y-H-E-A-R-T-I-N-K dot com. That's my website. And uh, I do have something on there about the snowflake. I write a blog uh, every Friday. No doubt it's an encouraging <laughs> blog. Uh, I, I think uh, we have enough uh, negative and fear going on in the world. We do need each other's encouragement. And so that's what I try to do every Friday. And that's why the tagline of my uh, podcast is a slice of hope. 
to raise mm-hmm. faithful kids because I'm in full agreement with you. I mean, there's plenty of things we can gripe about and worry about and complain about, but that doesn't really get us anywhere. You know, we what we need is hope and trust and recognizing that ultimately, you know, everything is in God's hands anyhow. And, uh, you know, where we can fall with our little snowflakes to, uh, to, to help contribute to that, um, that's all great. Um, All right. Any parting thoughts for our listeners on teaching young children about God's plan for their lives? Oh, I would say just love them, you know, encourage them, pray for them, pray, pray, pray. Um, And when you see someone who maybe is different or um, even acting badly, uh, first of all, instead of uh, coming at them from a harsh point of view, maybe try to understand where they're coming from. Uh, Not everyone grows up in a loving environment, uh, maybe they've had a really bad day. And so instead of uh, lashing out or um, criticizing, uh, maybe just surround them with love, pray for a way to uh, interact with them. Yeah, just encourage, encourage, encourage. That's a beautiful message and a beautiful way to end our our interview today. Emery, it's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Uh, I just uh, think it's awesome that you have a ministry to where you reach out to children. Uh, It definitely is a different day and age. Um, I do think the the children of the world are things are thrown at them at first of all at a much uh, younger age uh, with a different angle, uh, not acceptance and love. And I think anything that we can do to to prove that to them, to to give them uh, that slice of hope uh, is awesome. So thank you for doing this, Tony. I appreciate it. On our entertainment review segment today, I have back with me Jen and Kate Waldike from Catholic Mom and Daughter, the YouTube channel where they've been working together, reviewing books and curriculums. They were actually my first guests on episode one of The Shepherd's Pie, and I love them so much. I wanted to bring them back periodically to be guest reviewers. So they are here today to review two new holiday books, Tommy DePaola's Christina's Carol and Gracie Jagla's The Night the Saints Saved Christmas. So Jen and Kate, welcome back. Hi. Hi, it's great to be back. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Let's talk first about the Tommy DePaola book called Christina's Carol. And is that a picture book or a chapter book? It is a children's picture book. If you have a Tommy DePaula fan in your life, this is his last book. So definitely you want to add this one to your collection. Wonderful. All right. So tell us a little bit about the book and what you love so much about it. I really love the pictures in this book, just seeing all the different types. Um, He has, there's some still shots of dioramas of his work. And then also the poem by Christina Rossetti in here is wonderful as well. Yeah, it's it's her famous poem in the bleak midwinter illustrated. You know, it's about the nativity. Yeah. You know, like, what can I give Jesus? I have nothing. I can give him my heart. Yeah, it's accented so well with all of his beautiful pictures. So the book has some of his new drawings that he was working on before he died. And then it also has some of his old favorites and also has those dioramas that Kate was talking about. So it's like the best of Tommy. (laughs) It's really wonderful. It's just beautiful. So it's Tommy's greatest hits along with Christina's classic. What's the famous phrase in the poem that you that you just read out to me? Let's see. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give my heart. Yes. So we've got one greatest hits from Tommy DePaula, Carol Book. And what is this other one by Gracie Jagla? All right. Uh, the Night the Saints Save Christmas. This one is just a fun story. It talks about how St. Nicholas wakes up on Christmas Eve morning and he is sick. So the other saints have to go and take over Christmas for him. It is so fun and so creative because it has all the different saints. It has St. Peter planning out like a strategy of sending each saint to his or her own country to deliver the gift. But then they can't drive St. Nicholas' sleigh. They don't know how, so they have to figure out alternate means. They all, you know, take their strengths like... 
Joan of Arc rides her horse and John Paul II's on his skis. So <laughs> isn't that so much fun? John Paul wearing his goggles, delivering his <laughs> on skis. <laughs> that um, is pretty um, awesome. It's so. written in rhyming verse. So it's a quick read, but you have to read it several times so you can identify all the different saints that are in the pictures. It's always something new to find in the pictures. Do they identify every saint that's in the pictures or do you have to figure it out for yourself? You have to figure it out for yourself. So we were just trying to do that before we got on with you. So it's a real fun play on all of the saints. It's, so is this the kind of book that you could read in one sitting to your family at the holidays? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's a quick read. But then again, you just want to drink in all the pictures <laughs> and go back and look at everything again. Look at everything. Yes. There's St. Andrew freaking out because no, you know, the presents can't get delivered. So what I want to know out. is this, and, and maybe they don't provide an explanation, but inquiring minds want to know, why is it St. Nicholas can pull this off by himself, but it's going to take every other saint in heaven, apparently, to do it when he's sick? The magic of Santa Claus. There are mysteries in the Catholic faith that we cannot understand. I mean, how many, you, with 48 pages, are you saying there's like 100 saints in there? Well, I don't know, maybe if you counted them all up. Because we can't okay. identify all of them. Like, we don't know, like, who is this guy? Is that St. Paul? I'm not sure. Do they identify some of them by name, though? Some of them do talk and give some Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So and what do you think will be the favorite for families and kids as they're going through there? Is there something that stuck out to you as the coolest part of the book? It sounds like you like John Paul on skis. Yeah, that was my favorite. How about you, Kate? I think my favorite is how he, how she utilizes, like, the skis and the mountain climbing. You get to see a little bit of what the saint liked and how they what they did in their earthly life as well so and this is in our sunday visitor book osv our sunday visitor hot off the press that is great i mean that does sound like a lot of fun it sounds like the kind of book that if you're going to get a book for your family this holiday either one of these two books looks like you can't go wrong thank you so much for bringing these two books to my attention uh any uh, any parting words for our listeners today buy more books Thank you so much for being with me to review these two books for the show. And you guys have yourselves a Merry Christmas. You too. Thanks. That's all the time we have for the show today. We spoke with E. Marie about her book, A Snowflake's Adventure. And Jennifer and Kate Waldike recommended two wonderful books as gifts for Christmas or to read to your family during this joyous season. Again, this is Anthony Barone Colank, and this has been The Shepherd's Pie. If any of you listening today have a question for me or a topic you'd like to have us cover on the show, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C dot com. Also, if you visit my website, you can learn more about my historical fiction series for kids, The Harwood Mysteries. I'll end, as always, with my wife's favorite scripture quote from Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. May the Lord bless and keep you this week.